off. The clock has started. Roger. Hi, yes, I'd like a a tiny bowl of soup and give me all your breadsticks. It's like a gravy boat, but with manners in it. Welcome to the Good Stuff Morning Show. Here are your hosts, Kyle and Teddy. Kyle, what's up? What's uh what's uh what's up? Bah. Not a not a whole lot. I'm okay. I'm uh I didn't ask how you were. Oh. <laughs> Alright. What's what well, then the sky? <laughs> oh, that's well, is it though? It's relative. You can't touch you know? the sky. Can you? <sighs> yeah. You can. You can? You can touch the yeah. sky? Yeah. What if I did like this? I just wave my arm around. Am I touching the sky? It's you. Yes. Oh. Here, where you are. Oh. You're able to. My room sky. My office yeah. sky. I don't really like what's going on here on the <laughs> video. It's. You would think <laughs> that they. Just with everything that happened, they could. They could maybe bring the actors back and like have a a five minute looping video of people moving in the background to make it at least look real. Or you could just like content aware, fill the left hand side of the screen with like the, where the, you know, where the wall doesn't move and maybe it would be okay, but everybody else is moving. Kyle, Kyle is referring to my zoom background, which is a replica of the office, the Dunder Mifflin conference room where a lot of the talking heads occur. And, Never seen it. And in oh good. Inside is uh Stanley, and you can see Creed back there. But they are moving, Kyle. Just slowly. Just really real slowly, because that's on how the office works. Geologic time. Yeah. Yes. Yes, um, exactly. Era by hmm. era. Eon by eon. Did you did you happen to feel that earthquake today? What earthquake? Well, okay then. Makes sense. We did we talk about this on the show that your your perception of earthquakes is so acute because of where you are located versus I'm made of jello <laughs> the constant the constant san andreas fault shaking has turned your body into jello just mostly jello it's it's the bone the bone parts are still like nanners but oh my the, god the the meat no. that surrounds them is like jello okay you know, actually really quickly this is completely tangential and completely off topic my daughter asked me today because i said uh, something about uh we were watching a, a disney cartoon with pluto and pluto's like he has a bone and lucy my daughter mm. turns to me and says what are bones yes <laughs> where's the yeah and i had to like i had to come this is so good it was, you got it was it. Like this is like one of the what first... you plan for i know the, your whole entire life i know this I, moment i did not expect it to occur so so uh so quickly you I, need to have these answers now i guess you i need, need to, to plan I, I need them to read the encyclopedia so i have you all got, the answers n- no incorrect wrong wikipedia uh, wrong <clears throat> wrong answer Okay. You need to have the answer that will stick with them for a lifetime. Oh, for sure. Yes. Where they're 26 years old and someone tells them what bones actually are. <laughs> that, um, okay. that is the moment okay. that we that you sorry, I'm like looping myself now into this <laughs> shenanigans. That's what you need. Okay. I, I can't necessarily recall the full conversation or the full answer that I gave, but it it kind of started out and ended up being, well, you have they're they're in your body. You have bones in your body and they make you up. Went, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You went straight to Pluto's gnawing on your bones. No, I can't. I can't recall. I no can't recall the, the the transfer. I can't recall what the because what are bones. <sighs> I didn't know that she was asking about 
I was making like an existential an answer for her of like, your body is made of bones and your muscles cover them and it makes you move like trying to not be specific, but then also trying to be like kind of specific. I don't know. Should I have said there's 206? I don't know what Pluto I'm supposed found, to say. Pluto just dug up an old grave <laughs> and has found I mean, someone. She, there's cartoons that we watched. There's Mickey Mouse cartoons where there's like, there's skeletons in them, but she's never asked about those. She's only she only asked about <laughs> bones. Yes. In, okay. I guess right. in reference to Pluto. And I just took it to mean like, in general, what are bones? So I have to start somewhere. I can tell her later. I can get like a full chicken, cook it, and then I can show her, well, these are chicken bones, and these are usually the ones that you'll see in the cartoons, and I can do all that, I suppose. I think that's far. No, that's way too that's much too information. Much? Okay. You've gone. That's too deep down the rabbit hole okay. on bones. All right. We need you. You need to start um, really at the primordial soup, right? <laughs> you start. You start with the. The Earth's bone broth. Oh, my God. And it's all the all the little like bugs and sea creatures. They have bones that are on the outside. A lobster. Outside bones. A bug. Outside bones. What are you in first grade? That's that's where you start. You start outside bones. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, not doing that. But related to bone broth? No, not at all. Kyle, what's this thing that you added in the intro here? How to eat zucchini for breakfast? Ha! What? It's like a green bone, but filled gross with seeds <laughs> to grow more bones. To grow more bones. <laughs> I saw this article Mm -hmm. on foodnetwork.com. The title is, and this is maybe a question that you're going to get sometime. (laughs) Sure. Related. In, in, in like six weeks, maybe how to eat zucchini for breakfast. Yeah. How do you, how do you do that? So then food network goes into a bunch of recommendations on, Sure, yes, you can eat zucchini for breakfast. And there there are many ways and, and that are amazing. And we're going to show you what they are. Okay. Number they, one. They recommend zucchini bread waffles. Oh, what? Well, so you, you make the bread and then you just press it in a waffle iron? You make the zu- you make the bread. You put the, zu- the shreds of zucchini in it, oh, and then you you waffle iron it. Okay, so not the dough. you wouldn't do the dough. You'd have to actually bake the whole bread and then and then press it. No, no way. That's like that's like scooping out a bread and then rolling it into a ball and then eating it. That's not. I don't know. I don't understand this. You found it. What you else take, do they have? You take the batter. You take the batter that would basically make like a muffin, like a zucchini muffin, uh-huh. and you put it into a into a waffle iron. That's okay. fine. Right. Zucchini bread, yes. Okay, I get that. Potato and zucchini frittata. I mean, this looks this looks mostly pretty good. eggs. Mostly <laughs> eggs, right. but eggs and some bacon zucchini. bits. Um, and then they have a skillet. Eggs with squash, which is like what is this? It looks like zucchini confetti. Yeah. Did they did they like peel it or something? What I'm not this? sure. I'm not sure, but this looks like it would take a lot of time. So anyway, point being Oh, that's it. That's all they that's all they put in here. They didn't say like just eat a freaking zucchini put in here. Just like make regular things you would normally make and then slap a zucchini in it. Goody, but um, first I disagree. Of all, never asked that question before. Uh, how to eat zucchini for breakfast? Because why would you? Second of all, um, all of the foods that you listed on there are that's just that's just breakfast. Food. Like I don't understand why it's breakfast food with zucchini. Great, but, right, but I'm not. I'm saying why? Why is the zucchini the special ingredient here? 
because you're trying to get you're trying to get that good green bone into your oh into your God. meal into your meal into your in meal. order to get the good veggie-ness from it. Oh, boy. Can why let's just come up with some other alternatives here okay. for All right. ways to ways to zucchini your breakfast. I've got one. You had you had a zucchini pizza the night before. In the morning, you got zucchini cold. cold pizza. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Boom. I think mm, I feel like the zucchini pieces on it would be rather sloppy. Just kind of like maybe watery. Oh, that sounds that sounds barf inducing, Kyle. Please don't ever make that association. I am gonna throw up. I have I have an idea. What if you just ate it? Like just a stick of zucchini and just uh, just a un straight straight up uncooked zucchini. Bite it like a corn. <laughs> wait, wait. Typewriter or around the world? Around the world. <laughs> Around the world, there's like, no core. Like I was gonna say, so, to the yeah. to the seed core, like to the seed. You, you go all the, you go all and then the way through, and then it's gone, and then you move yes. over, and then you move over, and then you do the next one. Okay. Yeah, I guess typewriter. That's, that's, you you just start getting the peel in your mouth, and then would you'd be like, I'm done with this, and you wouldn't even get to the we, good bits. I've got another idea. Okay. Can we core it? Core the zucchini uh -huh. entirely. Okay. Cut the entire middle out end to end. Mm -hmm. You end up with basically just like a hollow zucchini tube. Okay. <laughs> then you fill that zucchini tube with breakfast accoutrement. Sausage inside the zucchini. Eggs inside the zucchini. So you're like sausage plug inside the zucchini. <laughs> God. So you're like uh, trying to recreate the breakfast burrito. But with a zucchini inside a zucchini with a zucchini tortilla, <laughs> just but it's just a, like not, a solid zucchini. Not, not even. It's just a solid, solid, friable. It's Ooh. like a scotch egg, Wait. but it's a zucchini. <laughs> I was going to say it's like a Monte Cristo, but it's yeah. a zucchini with yeah. breakfast uh -huh. food in it. Correct. Yes. Okay. So you fill it with eggs, bacon, sausage, um, Onions and peppers. No, maybe? I still think I still really do think if you've cored out the zucchini <laughs> end to end, mostly like, let's say, let's say like, <laughs> have people tuned out yet? <laughs> six, six eighths of the zucchini length. <laughs> it's three fourths, you idiot. <laughs> did you, there's did a you reason. take math? There's a, there's a re listen, there's a reason because you want to you want to take a sausage, have it and then plug up both ends of the zucchini with the have sausage. You're you're creating a missile of breakfast food inside of a zucchini. Uh-huh. And then well, obviously you cook it. Okay. So all of oh wait, all of the ingredients you've added are raw? Yes. Oh no. Zucchini how raw. Do you, how do you eggs cook the inside? <laughs> Sausage. Eh. Whatever. Could be raw. Oh my god. Then you wrap it and put it in a steamer for six hours. Oh, my God. You steam that zucchini until it's gelatinous. <laughs> then, then, oh, my God. Then, then you slice it like deli meat. <laughs> You're making zucchini bologna. And you put it on a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> hey i want breakfast i better start at midnight <laughs> <laughs> yeah you probably you could probably sous vide it i oh, if, i would guess jeez stack those bad boys up in a oh my god just a zippy bag you know god that hurts my body should we not have zucchini for breakfast Is we, that should, what we we're... should just we should just not eat it for, for okay. breakfast. yeah all right uh, well headlines <laughs> These are today's headlines, 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 headlines. Are we, headlines, are we going to, headlines, headlines, are we going to keep doing this? Headlines. I don't know, but uh, there's, there's a few things that we can talk about here, Kyle. 
Okay. In fact, this first one will kind of lead us into another conversation. But Clubhouse embraces spatial audio for more lifelike conversations. That's right. They updated their app and it now supports uh, iOS spatial audio. But this is really just a vessel for me to plug the fact that I with a sausage so that the <laughs> liquid eggs ends. don't come out. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. this this is my way to say that I I really needed you to finally try <sighs> Atmos Dolby Atmos spatial audio yeah. sound with mm-hmm. Apple Music. And I and you were being so resistant. You're like, uh, and I would tell I would explain the feature as as I was observing it. And you're saying, ah, whatever, whatever. And I couldn't take it anymore. And so I sent you ten dollars and I told you, you need to subscribe to Apple Music. Listeners, and this is you what you pay it. for, by the way. This is what this is. This is where <laughs> this is where your money goes. <laughs> no, so. this is from my personal stash. Um, hmm. But anyway, uh, I had you sign up and then I mm-hmm. sent you some songs to try out. And now now the listener can hear your initial impressions of the spatial audio feature the Dolby Atmos multi-channel experience that has been added to Apple Music which we hyped or I hyped a lot earlier this summer so tell us tell us your experience Kyle well um, so I needed to I needed to like go into the settings on Apple Music uh, on the Mac to make it work the way that I needed it to work so that was frustrating well like the experience of getting there getting to the point you did send me songs so fine okay um i tried it in regular headphones i tried it on regular speakers it's fine right like it's not going to give you the the spatial audio experience it's going to give you the dolby whatever like you know lossless like stuff Right. Well, it, it's only going to give you lossless. Okay. What? The, what? The Atmos feature will not activate unless you have a supported device connected. <sighs> okay. I told you that. Matter. And you're like, it doesn't. It's fine. It sounds fine in my headphones. And I said, no, you got to use AirPods. And you're like, it's the same. It's um, the, I it's, spent a lot of money on these headphones. I want to listen to one of these headphones. And I said, no, you got to do the I AirPods. I should. I should be. A- it's the same number of I ears. I didn't make the I rules. should be able to put them on the headphones I want to put them on. Anyway, point being, mm-hmm. tried it, put the AirPods on. <sighs> it's good. <laughs> like, holy, <laughs> it's good. Because it specifically felt like the stems, the like mastering was done for people to listen to it this way well yeah totally it, the the it's whatever entire, the remaster it's, is yeah yes. whatever the process it's whatever is. these re, it's not just and it's not for everything now that's my biggest that's my biggest gripe is that it's not something that they can just be like mm, it's close enough if we do this thing to it and it sounds pretty much the same mm-hmm. Right, you can't, you can't like, algorithm remaster them. I thought, okay, see, that's my problem. I thought that that's what they did. They just, like, I don't think it slammed is, yeah. a bunch of songs into this thing and said, look, or whatever, it's going to be echoey in the room. It's definitely, the thing I told you was it sounds like they took a recording from an alternate dimension and brought it into this dimension <laughs> and made it like mixed it differently and they they had like a a cinematic like a like a movie editor movie sound editor or soundtrack editor worked on it and like made it so that there's there is so much dynamic range yeah that you could fit a thousand more things in there and you would still have dynamic range like right. i don't know i don't know how they did that but it's clear it's huge dynamic range it's weird it feels un- it's like a in a weird audio uncanny valley situation yeah. where i actually so the experience i like i don't actually know if i like the sound of the songs in this mode 
Right. I, I know what you're saying. I know that it's like it's hard to say that some of your favorite tracks that you're listening to. I don't like going back and forth, I think, is the main thing. That's I don't, true. I don't like like, hey, whoa, this sounds this song sounds amazing. I listen to the very next song in the album and it's like stereo. Right. Well, slammed to to just the upper limits of the limiter. But like, is is that now like the impetus to force these they're uh, not gonna no they're not gonna listen I mean, not, not force but like no 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 I'm saying the artists and the labels like are the, is Apple by introducing this feature to a lot of people and saying this is the new wave of mixing this is a new wave of listening people will prefer this if you continue to uh, support this feature people will get used to it and if you try to release stuff in just like regular stereo People no. will not like it. I don't know. No, I don't think so. I did listen to it on my 5.1 in the living room, though, mm-hmm. and <sighs> good on some songs. Others were really strange. Mm-hmm. I listened to one song that was on the spatial audio playlist. The vocals only came through the center channel. Mm hmm. Uh, that's well, that's a movie. I get it. That's like how you do it in a movie. But for every other song, yeah. they were coming through on all the channels. Right. And it sounded ridiculous. So I I agree with everything that you've said so far, of course, um, except for I like the feature and I would prefer it over just regular stereo. But then again, you also mentioned, please let me use my expensive headphones yeah. that aren't Apple related. Yeah, I agree. We I just, think that we I tested it right before this episode as well, and we've got pretty good dynamic range. I, I think the next time we do that, we're going to pop in the air, the old AirPods and see what happens. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the other thing that I wish would happen, like I, I guess whatever the next step is for spatial audio, um, maybe they'll announce it in the coming months. But dump that feature into logic so that I can play around with it. Oh, that would be, yeah, that would be right. Fun. They, they need to. Uh, so I think that is whatever the tool like, it is that that's you're the using. only thing that they're going to be able to do to drive this. Plus, I guess like, ha- are you really going to upload like 7.1 AIFF files to Bandcamp? No, <laughs> right. Yeah. Probably yep. not. You're going to sell the, well, you know, the blasted to heck limited mastered stereo files in wave. And that's, that's good enough. That's the other thing is that maybe Apple starts uh, creating an avenue for independent artists and making it easier for people to upload music to the Apple music servers. Because that's the only way that you'll be able to listen to the spatial audio feature make like a direct like logic to Apple music feature. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll pay extra for that. Sure. The thing that I will not pay extra for, and I do not like is the story that you brought here to the headlines. This oh. is reminiscent. <laughs> this is reminiscent of, and I haven't listened to it. So again, this is my, I got to experience it. You know what? Maybe I'm realizing I just, I, Got to give my hot take. You mm. know, I got to get the hot take in before uh, well, the hot take has a little bit of zucchini in it. So you oh, need to roast. It, it has. This needs to be a nutritious hot take. Oh, the spatial audio of voice conversations is a step backwards in the way that podcasting used to be where some some folks would mix Left channel was one person, right channel was another person, and it was chaos. Mm -hmm. Just hugely unlistenable in a car, massively unlistenable in headphones. It's the reason why the mono settings inside of podcast applications or your settings Exists. For me, gets any any no gets any sort of use specifically for for that reason mm. because early days it just like find a good podcast and it's like slammed left and right. Mm-hmm. Plus, 
bigger bigger file size. So anyway, that's true. Well, the, spatial audio with this I, with Clubhouse. Uh, How's that going to work? Are you going to like think turn the, your head <laughs> to focus on a person? Well, that's the and idea. You hear them more loudly. So with iOS devices and AirPods, the spatial audio feature works like your your device becomes like your center, and then you can either move your head or move the device, and that changes where the center is. Right. So like if you were using Clubhouse and you had your device right in front of you, and you started hearing somebody. Who sounded like they were behind you, like to the left. You could turn your yeah, head. Yeah, this guy sucks. I, I don't know. <laughs> right, I, I, and it sounds like he's well, saying. I just don't like it. And it's sounding like it's coming from over there. You turn your head, and then you can create that, and that becomes your center. And so it kind of like changes the focus. And so the idea, I suppose, is that they are they are trying to bring a like alternative focus feature. I don't know. It feels like you said. That's not how you want to ingest a lot of like just plain vocal or uh, speaking material like that's just not. I agree. That's not that's not the avenue that they should be going for. Um, it's weird. It's it's almost like a we could do this. So we will because we can. And that's the only reason. I don't know. They're the uh, so far as I know, they're the only ones doing it. So, That's yeah, true. sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I guess I'm going to move on go. to this next one, Kyle. Apple hmm. Music or sorry, Apple acquires classical music service Prime Phonic and they will launch a dedicated classical music app. What? Yeah. So they so Apple announced it. It's not just like a like a rumor mill or, or anything. They announced it that uh, Hold on. The, it's, in, oh, its own app, though. Well, so. It acquired the classical music streaming service Prime Phonic, and it'll be okay. folding it into Apple Music. So Prime Phonic says they offer an outstanding oh, listening experience with search and browse functionality optimized for classical audio, plus handpicked recommendations for content for contextual details uh, on repertoire and recordings. Apple says that with the Prime Phonic f- purchase, Apple Music subscribers will be provided with an improved classical music experience. It will start with the Prime Phonic playlists. And audio content, and in the coming months, Apple will offer a dedicated Prime Phonic experience with improved browsing and search capabilities, Prime Composer, and repertoire, uh, better classical music metadata, and more. Um, yeah, I'm not really seeing what like the app will look like. Oh, oh, sorry. It, it, Next year, app, Apple says it will launch a dedicated classical music app that combines Prime Phonics classical user interface with added features. So they're basically absorbing all of the features and content and data from prime phonic. And then they're kind of like fold, like if they said, fold it into Apple music um, with playlists and artists and whatnot. And then they're essentially going to revamp the prime phonic app. That's my guess. I don't know. Have Why? you tried the classical music playlists for spatial audio? No. What? Why not? I don't Why? care about classical music. No. Give me the dubstep. I that's what that's what I need. I need <laughs> when when is it going to be? Listen, I want to stick around long enough. Just long enough. It Do, mm-hmm. doesn't need to be any longer than this. So that dubstep is classical music. Oh my god. Like the hundreds composer, of years, Kyle. The composer like Skrillex hundreds of years was just ahead of his time. <laughs> you get like like Skrillex sheet music. <laughs> well, that definitely exists at Guitar Center right now in this very moment. That has to exist. Sure. Um, yeah, no, you're gonna have to. I live just for don't know why it needs its own app. That's all. That's it's a. Uh... Well, no, no, no. It, the <laughs> Prime Phonic is already its own app. I think. I think what you're missing here is that Apple. But why? Why? What do you mean? Why? Why? Why are they their own app? No. Why would you purchase it and then create a separate application? No, Kyle, Kyle, they purchased. We'll launch dedicated classical music app. Which is essentially the Prime Phonic app. They'll just make it look very Apple. They're shutting down Prime Phonic on September 7th. It's going to go away for a while. And then when they bring it back, it'll have a new shiny coat of Apple paint. And they'll say it's a new app, but it's not really a new app. Okay. Okay, Kyle, this is like this is like Apple acquiring Dark Sky, shutting down that app, 
and then Apple saying, hey, we have Apple weather and it's just dark sky. Okay, but it's not a separate dedicated app to rain. That's not like that would be that would be the equivalent of, hey, we we got this. We got this weather service that's really good at rain. So we're going to acquire it, spin it down, and then we're going to launch a new application that's dedicated just to wind. That's it. That's all we're doing. I do have a theory, though. Oh, I have a theory about what this what this new service will be called, because there there's no way that Prime Phonic sticks around as a name. No, there's a I reason, don't really there's like a reason they're shutting it down. I think Apple's going to they're going to go back to kind of their. Um, you know, like. Uh, 1600s sort of what? like uh English roots. What? And this will be this will be called Newton. No, it won't be called Newton. The, It'll be called the Ye old Apple. Ye oldie. <laughs> the Apple Tree. The Apple Tree, there you go. Kyle, Windows Falls 11 on to the Newton. Windows 11 launches on Makes October the 5th. Music. Windows 11 launches on October 5th. Here are the PCs that will get it first. If you are a PC user, You'll want to hear this so that you can get your copy of Windows 11 on. I was almost at opening day <laughs> on launch day. <laughs> Yee-haw! Actually, 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 <laughs> this morning, this morning, um, my wife was leaving for work and uh, she was going to give me a kiss goodbye. And I said, no, 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 no. I have and my brain shut down and I couldn't think of the word morning breath. And so what I said was, no, 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 I can't kiss you. I have breakfast mouth. And I think it's grubby, chili fingers. Yeah, <laughs> I have grubby, chili fingers, hon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, breakfast mouth. It's like my favorite word now. Breakfast mouth is very good. Right. That's uh, you. Fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Write that down. Okay. Do the good, make good, the good. title. OK. Um, who cares? Well, I, I just want to list the the products that we'll see a an October 5th launch for Windows 11. Um, they are staggering the rollout. But on day one, these are the eligible eligible devices. That's a hard word to say. Uh, it includes Acer Swift 5, Acer Swift X, Asus ZenBook Flip 13 OLED, ZenBook 14, Alienware X15, X17, Dell XPS 13, HP Spectre X360 14. These are a bunch of laptops with stupid names. Uh, the HP Envy X360. Wait, 15? What? X360. Uh, Lenovo Yoga 7. The Yoga <laughs> Slim yeah. 7i Pro. Oh, uh, Samsung Galaxy Book Pro. The Book Pro 360. And Microsoft's own Surface Pro 7 and Surface Laptop 4. All right. So can we can we can we stop naming products? I think yes. I think that the can we just stop, especially <laughs> the PC market has uh, the no, PC no, no, laptop. No, 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 no. Look, look, and and mobile phones. I suppose you're right. Everything, everything. Peanut butter. Stop <laughs> calling it. <laughs> just don't need it. GIF X360. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or yes that that's what we do more of that naming annualized vintages yes everything is a butter. wine everything's Every, wine i i want i want to know i want to know what model of this peanut butter experience i'm getting right is this the latest am yeah. i getting the older generation well that would help with um that would help with I almost said eggs, but like eggs would have to be Peanut very butter specific. And eggs is probably a thing, and I'm going to look it up. Oh, no. <coughs> Whoa, barf. Um, but if you called it like the X, the Dell XPS 2001, not 2001, uh, 2021. Yeah, it'd be easier to keep track of. But not every product has a uh, what is that face that you're making? Uh, not every product this has is like really a- zoomed in, really zoomed in. Uh, scrambled peanut butter eggs, while it sounds p- 
potentially horrific. Uh, Ooh, it is a West African dish. Uh, do you scramble with the peanut butter? Yeah. You two tablespoons peanut butter, ginger, garlic. Okay. And then some uh, some sriracha with eggs. Oh, okay. So you're you're doing like sweet and spicy. It's a it's a sweet spicy. Yeah, you got to get some more. You can't just do peanut butter and eggs. You right. got to have more savory you have to bits. Cover up a lot that. of that flavor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, I'm, that's I'm like, into it. I'm like ready to spicy eggs. With I'm ready to try sauce. it. I did load. I stop. So we are talking me. about computers right now. I did load allrecipes.com and my laptop immediately took off into the stratosphere and you can probably hear it in the background right now i am seeing though hp labor day sale uh is loading ads just over and over and over sucking all the bandwidth from my house yeah at the moment you keep freezing this is horrible i'm closing this website it's it's mining it's mining bitcoin as I'm as I'm speaking, it's like you never learn. Stop it, <sighs> Kyle. What's today okay. special? It is. Oh, that's your job. <laughs> I don't have the sound, so I have to prompt you to play the sound. You should just yeah, give sorry. me the sound. Uh, today's <laughs> special is <laughs> National Cherry Popover Day. I'm just going to pop over to your place and get a cherry, maybe. Are you are you Cliff Clavin from Cheers? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. Uh, I'm going to read from this website. Surprisingly, there is no National Popover Day. Although plain popovers are divine, perhaps our favorite bread. According to thenibble.com, popovers are delicate, almost hollow rolls that majestically rise up over the tops of pans they're baked in. They pop over, you know, you get it. Uh, The outsides are crisp and brown. The interiors soft and airy. The tops pop over the baking tin. In the UK, they're called Yorkshire pudding and are often served with a side or a slice of prime rib or other beef. Is this just a US, muffin? No, no, it's this is like uh, I mean, I guess it's like an empty muffin. It's like a what? hollowed out muffin. Yeah. You were you listening to this? It's soft and airy inside. In the US, there is a as zucchini. A, does it have does it have any zucchini? Will you in let it? me get through the spiel? <laughs> in the US, they're often enjoyed as a special substitute what for the a roll heck? or a biscuit, and they're often served at brunch or with butter or jam, although neither is required. When you when you said pop over, I'm thinking, okay, it probably goes like beep, like a le- like a little muffin, you know? No, like not this- like a muffin top. No, no, no. This like thing a- this thing is like a mushroom cloud in a in a tin. This okay. is a bu- this is a bouquet of muffins, Kyle. But you have to know, popovers are not difficult to make. The only challenge is to serve them quickly, since as they cool, they deflate. So you can reheat leftovers in the microwave. They won't return to their original puffiness, but they're still yummy. This is incredible. I'm sharing my never had this. I've never I've never I maybe have seen this. I've never had this good ever. You took over my entire screen. All four of them. Ever, 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 ever. Why does this automatically change? It's at full screen, please, for the love of everything. Ever. Goody. Um, the popover is an American version of Yorkshire pudding, as I said before, a batter pudding made in England since the 17th century. Both use the same batter, but the difference is that popovers are baked in individual molds like custard cups. Um, so like special muffin tins are used, but um, you can you can get regular muffin tins. That's fine. Could you plug the end of a zucchini with a popover? No, it would deflate. Yorkshire Big pudding zucchini. is traditionally really? baked in the pan of drippings from a roast beef. Uh, roast beef and Yorkshire pudding is a signature British dish. The oldest known written reference to popovers or Yorkshire pudding dates back to 1850. And the first cookbook recipe was published in 1876. So they've been around a lot longer than you think, Kyle. And you've never had hmm. them. No, I 
uh, I guess not. This is, mm, it's the thing that Gordon Ramsay, when he was doing his UK version of Kitchen Nightmares, it was like one of the things that he would say, if you can't make a good Yorkshire pudding, you kind of don't deserve to be a chef. And he's being really critical, right? But now you've learned what they are. You're like, yeah, if if you're a chef and you can't even it like, it makes me it makes me viscerally react and quite vomitous. Oh, that the word pudding is being applied to <sighs> this crispy bread thing that looks really tasty and like a pastry, and you're like, it's a pudding. It's not no. It's not, it's not a, it's not a pudding. Monopoly. It's not, it's not, it's not a pudding. It's a bread. It's a muffin. It's a big muffin. It's the furthest thing from a pudding it could be. I don't, I don't think that's true, but okay. I think a rock is the furthest thing from a pudding. Fine. Whatever. Okay. Look. Anyway, that's your national uh, cherry pop. I guess it, it didn't really. The, the article that I found didn't really include where the cherry kind of comes into the into play. But I assume what they mean is like cherry uh, compote or jam or something that you can eat with the pop over. It's not, I don't know if it's filled. I don't think you can fill it. I think you have to like bake it and then serve it with a side of like a cherry jam, and then you put that together and you eat it. I'm making myself really hungry. This sounds really good. And it, Kyle, hold on, and Kyle hold is on. so, so hell-bent on it just, pudding. Oh, it don't want any pudding. Don't put descri- the pudding. It describes both sweet and savory dishes. It. That's it. Yeah. It's used as a as a synonym for dessert. Mm-hmm. That's the common uh, English pronunciation translation. I don't know. Huh. Anywho, Kyle, let's talk about food. Other food. Other food than <sighs> than the pudding. Please. Could is this? Go ahead. Is this a? Is this a pudding? I guess is my question. Oh I'm going to have God. this question every time that we pudding or not, right? Oh, here Taco we go. Taco Bell's. I'm. Oh, I made the mistake. Thank you. Oh. I made the mistake of opening that up on oh, my no. computer, and so now again, <laughs> once again, skyrocketing into the stratosphere. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, I'll I'll say the the title here of this article. Yeah, Taco right, Bell's yeah. crispy chicken sandwich taco is finally being released nationwide. I made the mistake last time, obviously, of telling you a bunch of stuff that's only available at one store. So I figured let's lead with this chicken sandwich taco taco. Why? Is there a picture in here? No, there's not even a picture in the article. Well, that's Thanks, not how this delish. works. Com. I hate your guts. It's not. It's not how this works. Mm. You know that. Okay. So what? What is? What is the shell? What is the taco shell? What is that? I, I see. I see a small thumbnail in the notes. The part taco, part sandwich features all white meat, crispy chicken marinated in jalapeno buttermilk, seasoned with Mexican spices which is then rolled in a crunchy tortilla chip coating and then served on a warm flatbread taco shell flavored with Taco Bell's signature Chipotle sauce. Okay, that sounds fantastic. You can order it regular or spicy. The latter includes crunchy jalapeno slices. No, I will not do fast food jalapeno slices. I'm sorry, but I watched a Gus Johnson YouTube video where he went around to a bunch of fast food places to observe their jalapeno slices. And like 30% of the time he got stems. Which is which is awful and disgusting. So I'll include I'll put that link to the video in the in the show notes so that you can you're just can making watch more it. work for yourself right uh, now. It's but fine. It, it's OK. Would you eat this, Kyle? 
My doctor tells me not to. But <laughs> who's your doctor? Your wife? <laughs> my colon, mostly. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Colon. colon. They call me Dr. Colin. We cannot make that we cannot make that the uh the title of this episode because we always it's... add an emoticon to the mm-hmm. uh, or an emoji. Sorry, did I say emoticon? What yeah. am I, 40 years old? Yes. Oh, we you're right. About this. You're right. Yeah. Uh, you're 78. I'm 46. Correct. Okay. Kyle, what's in the... Oh, wait. Here. I'm going to do a little sting. Ow. Dominoes. We don't like them. But they made a TikTok viral watermelon pizza. What? What? Uh, the Domino's Australia TikTok account made an actual pizza with watermelon. They took the watermelon round, smothered it in sauce, cheese, and pepperoni, and then cooked it. This is all caps. Cooked it in the oven because who doesn't love hot watermelon? Oh, my God. That Weirdly enough, that reminds me of another Kitchen Nightmares. Um, this was the American version. They he Cle- goes clearly to- we're only we're only a kitchen nightmares fan <laughs> cast now called the morning show. Um, well, we're gonna start season two soon. Uh, but we still have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> that's ha- that's <laughs> soon. No, no. <laughs> anyway, ah, oh my gosh, that came out of my left because yeah, oh yeah, now because we know, turn on now stereo you, sound. Now you know, now you know how it feels. What are you? Uh, uh. I'm wired for the next three years. Where's the, the Slim Jim? Where's no, 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 no. Now, Randy uh, Savage. Find. Anyway, Kitchen Nightmares. Do, 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 he goes do, to a restaurant do, 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 and do, 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 the do, do, chef do, do, is like straight out of culinary school. He's never had an actual head chef job, but he thinks that he can just take care of it. And one of the things that he included on his menu was grilled salad. And when Gordon Ramsay asks the waitress, like, is this a thing? And he points mm-hmm. to it and he goes, grilled salad? And the waitress is like, yeah, it's grilled salad. And he and he turns to her and goes, he just puts the lettuce on the grill? And she goes, yeah. And then they cut to a talking head of the chef going, it's grilled, it's grilled lettuce. Can't go wrong. And he like smirks at the camera. And then Gordon Ramsay gets, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a head of lettuce. Yeah, like he a just, wedge. You know, like it's yeah, it's like a wedge of lettuce. He mm-hmm. dumps it on the grill and he mm-hmm. serves it that way with like a little spicy sauce or something like that. Mm-hmm. And Gordon Ramsay holds it up to the entire restaurant and goes, "This is a first, a grilled lettuce." And everyone starts laughing. And, he, and then he turns to the waitress and he starts using his fork and knife and he goes, "Well, the chef served me the butt of the lettuce, which tells me he didn't clean it, so I'm not going to eat any of this, buddy." I actually think it would be pretty good. No. Yeah. You get okay. a little bit of little bit of char, a little bit of smoke. You're getting you're literally getting burnt water. Yes. <laughs> I'm you're okay getting, with that. You're getting the flavor of the grill. You're not even getting the flavor now of Now you know how it feels. There you go. You're not even getting the flavor of the lettuce. You're just getting the flavor of the grill plus crunchy water. That's what you want, and it's all dirty. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anyway, what what uh <laughs> they made it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> uh I will not eat this. Then maybe you'll try the Mountain Dew Flamin' Hot flavor. Did you pre-order this? <laughs> You make it sound like it's an Apple product. And I have to get in line to. We do. <laughs> we were asking. This is what we asked for. We asked them to Ugh. name things and we asked them to make them available for limited time. What? What could this possibly taste like? What could possibly be? What? What is it? Is it literally like Mountain Dew plus? Flaming hot Cheetos. This is this. Y- yes, this is stomach acid in a can. For pure, sure, pure one hundred percent milk. The plastic <laughs> on the table. Stomach it's acid. It's like it to me. 
to me the the sensation that sensation the uh the impression that i get is um if i drink this i am drinking somebody's backwash who has consumed a can of mountain dew after eating a bag of flaming hot cheetos and then so they ate the bag they swigged down a full can of mountain dew let I want that, it to be let that way savor more, and then I, backwashed no, 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 back no, no. into one of these new cans. And I want it that's to be what I'm drinking. Way, <laughs> way, 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 way more flavorful than that. It's got to be. <laughs> I want that to be just. It's like you soaked a bag of Cheetos, blended it, and then only strained out the solids to get. Every last bit of the Cheeto flavor. What's funny is that we are do. <laughs> we're unfortunately uncovering the exact method <laughs> that Mountain Dew is going through. I and, want, the, and I can't tell I if it's the, good or bad yes. press for them. I need I need <laughs> this flaming hot Mountain Dew to be good. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I did see. I, I want it to be good. the The pre order happened today. News outlets are getting it. This, However, this honestly is like the uh, middle school challenge. Like kids at middle school go to the uh, drugstore. They go to like the gas station and they pick up one of these new Mountain Dew Flaming Hots just because of what's on the can. And then they that's the only way that Mountain Dew will ever sell any of these. Nobody in their right mind would prefer the flaming hot Mountain Dew with any dish ever conceived ever. You could be eating ice cubes and you'd be like, I don't want any of that. Right? No, no, <laughs> I don't want any of that. I'm joining the call. Wait, who is this? <laughs> I'm joining. I'm joining the call. Okay, join the call from from another device. Oh, boy. And I'm this showing you ruin. Oh, please don't make my computer full screen again. That's going to ah. I need to show you. You need to show me what? Nope, wrong one. Oh my gosh. This one. Whoa. So the the these news outlets were in first of all, we're in the wrong business. This should have gone to us. We oh, should yeah. have received. We should have absolutely received whatever this horrible looking tank of fire and just garbage. Oh, my God. Uh, we should have received this. This should have been in my mailbox yesterday. Um, what are we doing with our lives where this is this was not sent directly to us? So it's, get, it's like a, it's like a hazard. It's a, barrel. It, it's a press kit. It Listen, it's a press kit. It's fine. But. How we are not on speed dial for Mountain Dew is I, beyond me. I don't know. We got yeah. We got to like start sending out our PR feelers. We and, need to and, say butthole less. Probably is one thing. Maybe <laughs> a little bit. Just, we we've definitely gone over the quota for this episode. Yeah, <laughs> we've only said true. It twice. <sighs> so it comes in this. It, it first of all, look at the liquid. It is just fluorescent, fluorescent red. <laughs> you um, could shine a black light into that room, and that thing would glow. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the kit itself is like hazard looks like a construction site. Uh, what? it's got one can on the right hand side and then maybe a sweat band on yeah, the left. Why? It's no. branded. It's branded. You got to wear yeah. it so that you can drink it. But while... it's white. Yeah. It's going to turn red. What? Yes. As you. Yes. It's for your eyes. So you don't watch. <laughs> primarily uh, it's not a sweatband it's a blindfold that that's it that's all that's all i wanted to show you okay. so was was basically was this thing good so thing you went I, through this entire rigmarole just yeah. to show me an article you could have sent me through a text message nope oops uh da, 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 da. Oh, got a few more here Get a, get a few, get a few more. But you, but you put this one. Oh, that's right. Are you ready to eat your delicious nu nutrient square, Kyle? Yes. Okay, I, good. Because I actually, I got it. 
I got them here in this bag. Sure. For later in the show. Sure. Uh, Square Eat is a company. Um, they are trying to sell this. Uh, it, it says also um, <laughs> it's it's a Venn di- They're in the middle of a Venn diagram labeled sincere tech startups and dystopian satires that are a little on the nose because they are apparently born of a simple idea. What if you could eat squares? So they it's a right. concept. Yeah, it's a concept of food. Sure. Um, which makes uh, they blitz ingredients and compress them into ready to eat 50 gram packages or a square. Uh, you can buy your squares in packs of four or six and have them delivered to your house. They can be eaten hot or cold, heated in a microwave or a frying pan and come in a dazzling array of flavors, which I'm going to click on. Uh, but it, in yeah. the article, it says, yeah, including yeah, 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 yeah. Need beef, this. beef, chicken, asparagus, peanut, sea bass and salmon. Let's find out the other flavors. Um, Choco pancake. Sweet potato square, hazelnut square, broccoli and spinach square. That one looks like the bottom of the toilet bowl. Basmati rice square. Zucchini square. There it is. That's how you have zucchini for breakfast. You eat a square. Um, it's je- hold on. It's an entire zucchini made into a square. Yeah. A 50 gram square. Pistachio and cashew square. Oh, a vegan burger square. A quinoa square and a peanut square. So the, I don't the know why they have to say all these are square. It, just give me the flavor. I don't it's care. Squ- if it's, it's square. A, eat. I get it's, it. It's square. Eat. Fine. How much do I spend? <laughs> but the, so so there. First of all, the logo for Square Eat is like something that Apple announced in WWDC. Oh yeah. It it def it a hundred percent looks like. It's it looks like SDK. Swift or something. Yeah, it's it's an SDK you would use to tap into an Apple service. So yeah. Anyway, there's that. Plus, um, the three that, that that I'm looking at here in this tweet um, are grilled up. Mm-hmm. They are very clearly like taking the ingredients that are mentioned in there. So, <clears throat> uh, Burger Square mm-hmm. probably has their you know vegan meat thing uh or chicken square you talking right? about oh yeah okay it's, i'll give, you, I'll give just, you the chicken square okay give me yeah i want to know what's in okay the entirety of the chicken square first of all let me give you the nutritional facts 68 calories two and a half carbs 1.3 grams of fat 11 grams of protein that's not bad i don't know how many squares i would need to eat before i'm hung or uh full or satisfied but the ingredients Chicken breast, salt, black pepper, lemon, rosemary. That's it. Five ingredients. It is gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, nuts-free, shellfish-free, eggs-free, low carbs, and sugar-free. Uh, this, this, is, this is cool. Right? Wait, uh, hold no, hold this on. This is like well, actually no, I have to put this in context. This, this is, is a chicken McNugget. Yeah. <laughs> but this just is, this is the the Silicon Valley startup chicken McNugget. Right? This is the this is the food item that every tech company in the Silicon Valley feeds their employees in the company cafeteria or in the company break room they will have square eats they will i promise you no no this is again this is a sausage soylent started out as this is all this is is a sausage it's a square sausage squassage a squassage go ahead yeah no i i figured i i figured i won that but that's we'll go ahead and keep it I like I like the fact that they have different flavors, but the the ability to possibly eat these cooked or uncooked, I think is most intriguing. Right, because I don't know have we mentioned your uh attunement to eating frozen eggo waffles? Any any potato product frozen, love it. Any 
frozen uh, frozen waffles. Eh. Oh, oh, yeah, it was, take, it was take frozen it, fries. Take it or, I'm sorry. Take it or leave it. Um, it's. I'm curious about stuffing a chicken square <laughs> in my bag, saving it for later, and then coming back to it. What do you mean? Is, it, is that is that food safe? Wait, what? Wait, are you saying you couldn't finish one of these? No, 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 no. I'm what? thinking about packing. I'm thinking about packing one of these bad boys for lunch. Oh, cook, on a so, hike. So you? Oh, okay. So you cook it, or are you saying uncooked or unheated un, up? Un, no, it's not heated up. It's right. just like I think they. I think they cook. I think it's fully cooked. As though sure, sure, sure. You're having and then what? Like, v, like vacuum sealed? I think so. This would be a good trail. Individually, food. okay, all right. There's just grams? so much. There's so much moisture. There's so much moisture. Yeah, I would the, rather have vegan burger jerky. Vegan if burger gonna, jerky. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna take something with me onto I mean, a hike. Here's the thing, though, Kyle. You could probably dehydrate them yourself when you receive them, right? And then take them on your <laughs> no. Okay. This is this is <gasps> definitely Kyle, we we're going to get some of these squares and we're going to put them in our own waffle iron and make waffles out of the squares. Chicken waffles. What if you what oh if you combined God! is a meal a combi- a combination of multiple squares into one <gasps> and you make you a could sandwich combine out of it? any of these squares into a waffle iron and have a full Why do, why are we meal? waffling things? Why are we why are we because why do we have to press. waffle everything? It's a press that would that would turn the square into something else. That's what I'm thinking. You could do a panini press. You could do something else. You could do a sandwich press. But could we put could we put this on the inside of the zucchini? You've gone too far. Okay. <laughs> what what flavor? What flavor are they missing? What flavor do we need? Do we need to put in the recommendations for the squassage? I'm looking. Hold on. I I think. (laughs) I think chili squassage. Chili? Oh, like chili. Like it tastes. You taste it. It's. It tastes. It tastes like a chili. Grubby chili fingers. Yeah. But it's a square. You you want. You want these. You want these classically. Fish. Very, just really messy dishes. I would say sloppy Joe's square. I would say they're missing like a tomato, so that you could do like a like a burger, like a open face burger or something with a beef square tomato. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're missing. Chocolate pancake. I don't know what that is. <laughs> chocolate, a chocolate pancake as a square. Why is that one of the flavor? Why is that one of the top flavors? Clearly, what we need to know and what we need to get from you, the listener, what's your square food of choice? What flavor, what flavor s- squassage are we making to compete <laughs> with the square food? Our logo will look exactly like this, though. It'll mm. just be a tube. I'm, I'm okay with it. Breakfast breath. What was it? <laughs> Breakfast mouth. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakfast mouth. Squassages coming soon to a store near you, 2021. Uh, wow, that's that's quick. We only have like three months. That's right. Oh boy, hit us, VCs. Uh, we'll see you guys later this week. We won't skip out on another episode. Listen, hey, no, you, you wait. You waited all, all the way until the end of the episode to guilt me. I didn't guilt you. I'm I am partly to blame anyway, too. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Is this a pudding? Yeah, I'm putting the end to this. Is this a pudding? Is this a square pudding? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>